Hey friends, it's Kay. So it's Vlogmas, I have my heater on. I'm so sorry if you can hear that. We're gonna talk a little bit today. I've been meaning to make this video for a long time, but we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it today. We're gonna talk about it, we're gonna just get it all out there. Um, I filmed this like two times already. I just don't wanna, I don't wanna seem too passionate and preachy in this video. I just wanna be very direct with you and very like no BS. So today we're gonna talk about weight, weight loss, um, numbers, all that kind of stuff. So if you don't, if you can't handle that kind of stuff, if you're triggered, if it's, if you put you in a bad place, if you're already in a bad place about that and you cannot handle it, please do not watch this video. I will see you, take care of yourself. I will see you in the next one, but that's just what we're going to talk about in today's video. So if you're interested in that though, let's get started. So I have not talked about it a ton, but I, um, have been on a sort of body change journey for a little bit. So a little background, if you don't know, if you're watching me for the first time, you don't know me, hello. Um, I'm 46 years old and a, ch a child of the 80s. And I am five foot one and all of my life I've been very slim, uh, just naturally, just, just the way that I was. Uh, I ate you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner and just did ate enough to sort of maintain my physique. I was also very athletic. I was a dancer, I was an equestrian athlete, and I was very active throughout my entire um, childhood through early adulthood. And I was always very slim. I was so slim, in fact, that in college, um, on one of my jury comment forms, if you go to conservatory, music conservatory, you get a, every semester you have to perform for a panel of people and they will people meeting professors and they judge you based on your performance and give you a grade and everything and if you fail it you actually get kicked out but um and one of my jury comment forms i remember this very distinctly it said you need to eat more and it hurt my feelings because that had nothing to do with my singing it just i i don't need you to comment on my body size i was like 19 you know it was like you know there's no there was no need for that um and i i was very self-conscious for a while about how small i was um but Eventually, I got more comfortable in my own body and got to a place where I loved my body, as thin and as like non-shapely as I was. So um, I was this size um, all of my adulthood. I was kind of vacillated between weighing about 100 to 107 based on, you know, whatever was going on. and. Then 2020 came, and I, every, it, the same thing happened to me that happened to a lot of people. I stopped going to the gym, I stopped caring about what I was eating, and I was drinking a lot. Like, I got into a really bad habit where I was drinking, making dinner, at dinner, and like after dinner. Just cause like, it just got, it just got into, a, I got into a whole routine with it. And I didn't really care about um, the portions I was eating. I didn't care about moving and I didn't care about what I was eating. I noticed in 2021 that I, my face looked kind of swollen and I, I but I, and I noticed that a lot of my clothes did not fit. I hadn't weighed myself, um, but I noticed that a lot of stuff did not fit anymore. So I was like, oh, it must be a function of aging. I'm just going to like whatever, whatever, whatever. So um, that year was really chaotic. Like I moved, we moved to this house and um, we moved out of our last house. It was just really, we moved twice in 2021. So uh, there was a lot going on. And I remember in 2022, I, I remember looking down at my hands while I was driving and saying to myself, my hands look really swollen and I've I know what my hands look like we all know what we and I've played I play piano like my entire childhood so I'm used to looking what about what, what my hands look like and I was like my hands look really swollen I'm like is that a th and I thought again it was a function of aging and uh it wasn't so in 2022 I noticed that my well in 2021 actually I noticed that my wedding ring stopped fitting 
my wedding band, and I have an engagement ring too. Um, the wedding ring is a little smaller. It's like a little, it's like one quarter of a size smaller than my engagement ring. And it was so, it got so tight that I had to stop wearing it. I could hardly get it off and on. Again, not super concerned, but I was just like, oh, I'll just wear my engagement ring because it looks, it looks really pretty actually without the, um, without the ring, without the wedding band on. Sometimes I just like the look of it, just plain. Um, so I was just, you know, I just took off my wedding band and put it on a, a holder and never thought about it again. And then when in 2022, a lot of classical music stuff, I'm a classical singer, um, professionally started to like really happen again. A lot of stuff started to happen and I needed to like get dressed. And I noticed a lot of my concert clothes did not fit. And I was like, and I wasn't a one who got on the scale at all. And the last time I think I weighed myself, I was like 110 or something. And I got on the scale, I remember one day, got getting on the scale and it was 125. So on, and I'm a very petite person, so I'm about five foot one. So going from about 105 to 125 on a five foot one individual is very noticeable. And I did not feel good. I felt um, heavy, I felt tired, I felt really just not good in my own skin. And cause normally I was, cause until then I was like, oh, and you know, I feel kind of, I was feeling more voluptuous. I was like, oh, you know, we get feeling, but I started to not feel good about it anymore. And I wasn't like f fat, but it was like a skinny fat kind of thing. If that's something, I don't like the term skinny fat, but it's the only thing I have to describe, like it's a soft feeling. And I developed foot problems. Um, I do have a torn ACL and that gave me a lot of issues as well. I had joint pain um, and I had headaches all the time. I was, I generally did not feel good and did not feel confident. In 2023, I remember the beginning of 2023, I saw, I decided that I, I, it was time to take off the, the, the weight I had gained during COVID. Um, I went down traditional routes. I actually started, I joined, I joined Future at the end of 2022 um, because I was like, I, I can work out at home and maybe that'll jumpstart some of the, the weight loss. Um, spoiler alert, it did not, but I, st I do still work out for longevity, but not for weight loss. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and in 2023, in the spring, I decided I would join Noom and try that method and it was not good. I have, I know my friends have had success on, on Noom. Actually, my husband has actually had success with Noom. It's a wonderful app, um, but I didn't have a very fractured relationship with eating per se. So a lot of the stuff that was like psychological tips didn't really resonate with me very much. And the calorie count that they had me eating was low because I was meant to be in a caloric deficit for my size and weight. Um, but the problem was for me, tracking calories, um, I found to be very stressful. I, you know, I, I had to like look at labels and weigh things and I couldn't just grab a sandwich and eat my lunch and go on with the rest of my day. It made me very stressed. So I took, I think I kept up with Noom for like three months and I just, nothing came of it. It just was not helpful. And I was, I got really frustrated. I just, it was, I just said to myself, well, it may just a function of aging. Maybe that's just what happens when you get older. And I was watching a, a video, I was doing some research online, doing a video of someone who was my age, menopausal age, and what she did when she found herself at a, a weight that was not comfortable for her. And she mentioned she like cut carbs for two weeks or whatever, like a, a, a reset. And I, I said to myself, why, why would that work? Why would that, what's wrong with carbohydrates? I was like, that's what, isn't that, I, what's wrong with carbohydrates? So um, I went down an extensive rabbit hole because as the daughter of two physicians, I wanna make sure that I wanna know the mechanism of why everything would work uh, because that's just the kind of person I, I was. Um, I'm very curious 
and I come from a scientific background as well uh, that I didn't actually pursue professionally, but I had a lot of education, uh, post-baccalaureate education. And I discovered in all of my rabbit hole research that uh, a ketogenic diet was something I was going to try and see if it worked. I was, I've actually been thinking about that for a few years, but couldn't stomach the idea of giving up potatoes. <laughs> Potatoes are my thing. I don't have a sweet tooth, really. I mean, I do like sweet things, but I don't have a sweet tooth. Like, I'm not eating chocolate cake. I'm eating french fries and potato chips. I'm buying bags of potato chips and finishing the bags in a couple days. That's me. So I can't regulate myself when it comes to like potatoes and um, like other starchy vegetables. So I like, and fried, things I was like hey I'll try it for 30 days and see what happens and there are a lot of misconceptions about what a ketogenic diet looks like um, because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about everything in general um, but the only requirement in a ketogenic diet is that you are in ketosis you can do this any way you'd like um, you don't have to eat butter you don't have to eat bacon, although I do eat bacon. I like butter and bacon. Um, I'm not biting butter. I'm not putting tons of butter on everything. I'm not eating a ton of fat. Um, there are different kinds of ketogenic diet breakdowns. And if, since I was trying to lose fat, I was not going to eat a ton of fat. Um, so the only requirement of the diet was that you cut refined sugar. You don't eat things like starchy vegetables and you don't eat grains. Uh, those were the only three like things off the table, everything else on the table as long as you're in ketosis. Um, and so in cutting all of these things, I found, first of all, the amount of added sugar in foods was mind blowing to me. The first thing, I remember making myself a tuna salad earlier in the summer, turning the jar around and seeing sugar as one of the ingredients in mayonnaise why and then the more things I read labels on the more I was disappointed and angry because everything contained so much added sugar for no reason better than bouillon one of my favorite products on the market sugar um, and I understand that sometimes the sweet taste of sugar can balance out the salty taste and savory umami taste in some things is it necessary no, but the amount of things that contained added sugar when they didn't need sugar, like tomato sauce, was insane to me. Um, and so my only goal was to cut highly processed food. We're not talking about everything that's processed because simply cutting a steak off of a cow, putting it in a package, that's processing. We're talking about highly processed foods that you cannot make in your kitchen, like a goldfish. Um, some kind of Fritos and uh, Cheetos. I could eat hot Cheetos until the cows came home. I really could. Um, so things like that were off the table, but everything else was on the table. And I wanted to make things simple because I'm a very simple person and I wanted to make it simple. And the simplest thing I could do was make a protein, a vegetable, and a fat on the sides. So that meant either chicken, beef, lamb, fish, broccoli, green beans, uh, Brussels sprouts, although I don't like them very much, um, and then a fat, like some avocado, a little bit of yogurt, butter if you needed to add butter on your vegetables or whatever. Actually, butter on vegetables is really delicious. Um, and I, I cooked all of my own meals um, and ate whole foods every single day. Um, and in doing, in, in doing this sort of journey with myself, I continued to watch uh, content and read content about nutrition, and I've come to a couple of different conclusions. The first conclusion is that nutrition science, for as long as we've had nutrition science as a thing, is fundamentally flawed, and a lot of poor quality studies have been done. Because a lot of these are not controlled studies where they like lock somebody in a room and like put them in eight, and they're just like, you can eat one food, and we're gonna, we're gonna see how that affects you. That doesn't exist. That doesn't happen, hasn't happened. And two, no matter what way of eating you choose, I don't wanna use the word diet, no matter what way of eating you choose, if you choose to be ketogenic, paleo, carnivore, vegan, vegetarian, Mediterranean, 
what whatever way of choose what whatever all these little choices whatever you want to choose what's good for you because we're all different if you if you cut refined sugar processed carbohydrates and highly processed foods you're winning these are the three horsemen of the apocalypse i think that have gotten us into a lot of trouble um, and i'm not saying never eat a donut or whatever if you can eat one donut like as a treat once a week you amazing for you but if you recognize that if you eat one donut and then you reach for another donut and then you reach for another donut because sugar and refined carbohydrates are something your body doesn't know how to regulate and if you can't moderate that for yourself you need to recognize that because i could not moderate my own eating of potato chips and french fries and things of the like once that we've got moder we've got mottos from companies that said once you pop you can't stop bet you can't eat just one open a smile uh what would you do for a klondike bar um and so i think the way that i think of it is that like carbohydrates and things like that refined carbohydrates sugar whatever it's not i don't think it's like bad i think it is a treat it's fine um but i look at it the same way i look at alcohol not everyone that drinks alcohol is an alcoholic some people can have a glass of wine at dinner Put it down never pick it up again for a month and some people pick up one glass of wine and they need five more behind it and they need it every day um so i think that in order to find my way i had to learn what my behavior was and um i ate beautiful food every day that i made in my kitchen myself um i bought whole mostly uh, minimally processed foods. I sourced my proteins very carefully. It was really hard at first. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I was stuck for lunch a few times going, oh, what am I gonna do? And after about a month, I got into a rhythm. And I buy the same foods on a loop. And the taste explosion i used to like experience like that dopamine thing i used to experience in my brain from eating like hot cheetos and things like that has not happened to me <laughs> in forever i no longer have headaches i don't have joint pains i don't feel exhausted and i have a exceptionally clear mind i have i feel my mood is much more stable and i don't feel as tired did I say that? I might have said that. And at the end of last month, I I reached the my goal as far as um, weight loss, and I lost altogether the 20 pounds I gained during COVID, <laughs> and all of my clothes fit again, and it's a wonderful thing. Now I would be lying to say to say that it, I didn't do it for like vain vanity reasons. Of course, I, I wanted to feel good about my body, and I didn't feel good about my body at the in the shape that I was. But I also wanted to do it for my health because I'm closer to fifty than I am forty, and I don't think that my body can handle as much abuse as I was putting it through by eating highly processed foods i don't think that and i don't know i know about like I, I understand the need for food neutrality and to not label things as good or bad and things like that i i get it i get it if you have a, like a, a fractured relationship with food and eating i get it but in my mind these highly processed foods these like chips cookies things like that a lot of them were made in a factory they may have started out as a food, right? Um, but they've gone through so much and they were made in a factory and packaged and, and given and, and they, they have so many preservatives that they can last for a long time on the shelf. You know, you can go for like months without eating like something that's been in a package forever and just eat it. And it has so little nutritional value. Maybe there's a little something in there. 
but it has so little nutritional value and maybe those things aren't readily available for your body to grab that I don't think of those things as food anymore. I think of them as food products. And I also am very disillusioned by the practices of the food industry that I've been learning about. Um, if you want to look a little more into it, Kiana Dockery, Dockery, Kiana Dockery um, has a wonderful channel um, and sort of goes into some of the more shady things the food industry has done. And I no longer, I have different views about what is beneficial to put in and what is not. Um, and when I look at foods, I see um, fuel and and pleasure. I love like eating. It's fun, and it t t food tastes good. Food tastes good, and I had my taste buds were so destroyed and blown out by all the things fast food, all the things I had been eating, that eating regular whole foods was incredibly unexciting for me. And now, what is unexciting is comforting. I don't need to have fireworks going off in my brain when I'm eating food. I just want to enjoy it. And it's, I've eaten so many beautiful meals and I've learned a lot more about cooking. And the only thing I can really tell you, to be honest, if you're looking to do any kind of like whole foods um, based diet, that you should learn to cook. Um, I, I know how to cook, but I even learned even more about cooking. You should learn how to cook and learn how to f com combo flavors so that you can get the best experience, which means like making your own spice blends, like making your own salad dressing. And once you get the hang of it, it's fine. And the whole thing about like convenience food is yes, it's convenient, um, but at what cost? And I now have new convenience food. You know what my favorite convenience food is? Eggs. Eggs are ready in two minutes and they are highly nutritious and readily available and cheap and delicious. So I, I have a completely different mindset around it and I have a lot of different, um, very strong opinions about what's going on societally um, involving the food industry and stuff. Maybe that's something for another video, but like, you know, you don't, it's not, you don't want to hear about that. But like, that is my story about my body change and experience. Um, as someone who's never had to lose weight before, it was very eye-opening and it's, I can say, I mean, I never, again, I've never had um, to lose weight for before for any reason and it's hard it is hard um, and the food industry and the, and the and everybody else would like to point the finger at you say it's your fault you know eat less move more you it's you I think that there's a lot of other factors at play um, and I think that there's a lot of a lot of us are victims of advertising society culture um, it's pushed in our face every day um, that you're just a product of your environment. And I think that um, I just, I wish we had more compassion for everyone in every situation, but in particular with, with this. Cause I mean, the first thing I see in the grocery store when I walk in there is like chips and crackers and cookies and candy and it's, we gotta go back to the way our grandmas and great-grandmother and great-grandfather had stuff going. Anyway, don't take any health advice from me. I'm not, I am not a doctor. Talk to your medical professional before anything, you do anything, but I hope that I've inspired you if you have been stuck for a while. Um, again, I do work out three days a week, three, four days, actually four days a week for longevity. I lift weights, I do cardio, and it's just for longevity. When I'm 85, my only goal is to be able to sit on the floor and get up on my own power. So that means getting, getting gains and, and making sure my cardiovascular fitness is good and making sure 
I feel good and um, yeah. So I guess that's it. I hope that was not too much. I'm always very sensitive of content about body image, size, weight, all that stuff because it's very, per it's very personal. Um, like it's all very personal and what is okay for one person may not be okay for another person. Um, like it's just all, we're all individuals. I respect, I want to respect everyone's choices, images about themselves. Um, but I, I want to encourage you if you've been thinking about making a change, I feel like the only thing I can really pr like promote here or the only thing I really want to get across is that the main idea <laughs> is that if you eat more food and fewer food products, I think you can do nothing but good. Okay, that's it. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Why did I salute? Why? Uh, bye.